David Staples from the Edmonton Journal here today, and I'm going to talk to you today about why I don't think Alberta is going to go into another major lockdown, another firebreak lockdown as it's, as it's now being uh, talked about. Um, it's surprising to me in some ways that, that we're not heading in that direction. Uh, I think if this was any other time in the pandemic, we would be listening to the Alberta Medical Association, the Canadian Medical Association, uh, the many doctors and nurses who are pushing for this widespread general firebreak lockdown, shutting of schools, shutting of businesses, um, uh, shutting of sports teams, um, shutting of recreation facilities. The kind of thing that we saw um, at the start of the pandemic, we saw it again in November uh, through February, and we had it again in May, April and May. I don't think we're going to get that this time, and it's because the, the major factors that drove the lockdown last time are no longer in play. The vaccines really did change everything significantly. I'm going to go through four reasons why I don't think we're going to be locking down this time. First of all, last winter, a lot of the comp uh, countries that had the most open societies, the least restrictive, they were getting the crap beat out of them uh, on the internet, social media, and in their own political realms because of uh, high infection rates. I'm talking about Sweden in particular. Sweden is uh, known for having the least restrictive lockdown policies uh, of any country that's uh, had a major uh, COVID epidemic. Sweden essentially followed the World Health Organization's very uh, non-restrictive guidelines. The World Health uh, Organization heading into COVID was very leery of lockdown because they understood the great harm to public and economic health that lockdowns cause. Sweden was the only country that I saw that actually followed those who restrictions. Every other country started to follow the Taiwan uh, Chinese model of uh, very, very restrictive measures being put in place. And uh, Alberta followed suit as well with very tough measures. What we're seeing now though with the Delta variant, which is extremely infectious, is that Sweden is relatively untouched by it. It bumped up in cases over the summer, but hardly at all. And it's not bumping up now. Who knows if this is going to continue? The virus uh, changes. There's variants all the time. Things change. It's unpredictable. But after the last big outbreak went away in the spring, Sweden has been not been touched by the variant. And so it looks like their strategy of uh, immunize of natural immunity of people getting acquired immunity through getting COVID, uh, mainly having the younger, healthier portions of the population carry that weight. Looks like it's working right now. And it may be that Sweden will be the first country, one of the first countries at least, in a very big way to be able to fully open up again and not have to close down again. So we'll see how that story unfolds over time, but that's where it's trending right now. So this gives a boost to the argument about not locking down. We also see in Florida where there's they've had very uh, loose rules, hardly any rules, for, I think, if I'm not mistaken, for about the past 10 months or so, that they were hammered. They were absolutely hammered, uh, far worse than Alberta is right now by the Delta. But without putting in any restrictions, without uh, doing anything much um, in, in, the, in the realm of uh, public health measures, their, their case counts are crashing now. And uh, their rate of infection is now lower than Alberta's. So there's been a lot of people say, if you don't lock down, you'll never, you'll never get rid of it. You'll never tamp down. Well, it looks like after, you know, between two and three months uh, with these big spells of this highly infectious variant, the Delta, that if even if you don't do anything, it's going to start fading and going away and not being this huge uh, problem in terms of hospital capacity and hospital uh, overruns and them being overwhelmed there. So that's another thing that's to think about. Finally, when we compare those kind of jurisdictions with 
Australia and New Zealand who really embraced the COVID zero philosophy and lockdown tight. Anytime there was any kind of infection, lockdown tight. And that was being hailed uh, last winter and spring by many people as the, the way to go with COVID, the best idea. Um, you know, I always thought, well, they're, they're isolated Pacific islands. It's a little different than being Alberta. We can't put Alberta in the middle of the Pacific Ocean. Might be hard to do that here with all the trade and contact we have with the Americans. Um, nonetheless, they had success, but even them with the infectiousness of the Delta, um, they've been locked down tight for, for uh, almost two months now in Australia, but they had record infections with the Delta. It's not working. And it's not working because what they're finding is uh, lockdown fatigue, especially with unvaccinated people in their society. The unvaccinated aren't listening to public health rules to get vaccinated. And it looks like they're not following any kind of, uh, they're far less likely at least to follow the rules that are in place. So in response to that, they, they see both in New Zealand and Australia that they can't, they can't beat the, the Delta the old way. So they're going to, essentially they're adopting the, the methods that have been used in, in the rest of the world, which is to try to contain it and limit the harm. The second reason that I think that we're going to be um, not locking down again is before there was a kind of an overwhelming moral argument um, to lock down. When everybody was unvaccinated, the, the most vulnerable members of our society are our parents, our elderly parents and um, sick people were really vulnerable to COVID. It, it, it could easily kill them. Now they're all vaccinated. Now science has stepped forward and given them the best possible um, remedy that they're going to get for COVID. They're protected as they're ever going to be from COVID that moral argument is no longer in place. Instead, what we have is the hospitals are overrun because unvaccinated people are getting sick. People who have chosen not to follow the, the, the strong public health recommendation to get vaccinated um, and possibly very likely are much less likely to follow the rules in place. They're the ones filling the hospitals. It strikes me that with the contagiousness of, of the Delta, there the vast, vast majority of them are going to get COVID. And there's nothing we can do about that. That's going to happen. That's a fact. Does it really make sense to lock down uh, everybody else, ha have a lockdown of the vaccinated to try to protect them? The moral argument isn't so strong anymore when they choose not to protect themselves. The third reason that uh, I don't think we're going to lock down again is that before uh, lockdown, uh, it seemed both essential and we also didn't really understand the consequences of lockdown in a personal way. We were starting to get it, you know, last spring, uh, excuse me, spring of 2020, you know, it was all new and we were locked down and everyone was very scared about the virus and we, there was wide acceptance of it. In the fall, there was, there was much more debate about it, but there was still acceptance about it because everybody was unvaccinated. Uh, in the spring, um, even more grumbling. Now, even though there aren't great metrics to show the psychological, uh, public health and economic harm of the lockdown, even if even if that's going to take some time to truly figure out, we've been through this drill. We know, we know ourselves the harm that comes to our families uh, in terms of. Uh, uh, social isolation, uh, mental anguish, economic harm. Uh, we see it with our friends and families. We know for sure what lockdown means and we are done with it. Unless there is an absolutely and compelling reason to do it again. People get that lockdowns damage, that lockdowns uh, kill. And we've seen this huge rise in opioid deaths, for instance. So I don't see Albertans being keen about uh, lockdown again, knowing exactly what that entails. Again, if there was this unbelievably compelling argument to do so. Now the doctors have put forward this, that the, you know, things are, and, and people are open to what the doctors and nurses are saying, you know, surgeries have been delayed. That's a terrible thing. And I don't hear anyone uh, dis discounting that, that argument. 
there's also the incredible stress in emergency rooms. And I don't hear many people discounting that, although some do. I don't see, see hear many people um, thinking that doesn't matter. It, it, it matters and we all know that. But is there anything realistically we can do about it? And, and this brings me to the last and the most, I think, compelling reason against lockdown. We know at this point, the major vector of transmission is people in their own homes, get togethers, when you get together with your friends and family. And uh, when we were all unvaccinated, that was a huge cause. And that's why they put in very hard, strong rules against having friends and family over during those previous lockdowns. Right now, we have a rule for the unvaccinated. They're not allowed to have those kind of get togethers. If they follow that rule, our hospitals are not in trouble. Our ICU uh, is not overwhelmed. We already have the kind of lockdown rules that we need for this to end, for this crisis to end. Are the unvaccinated going to follow those rules? We'll find out. But further locking down the unvaccinated, what impact is that going to have? It, it is not the major vector. Yes, it, it might have some impact. I'm not saying it would not have any impact. It, it would, I think. But would it have enough? The only thing that's going to work I think it's clear to, to everybody by now, or most people by now, is the unvaccinated choosing to get vaccinated. And that's happening in Alberta because we brought in vaccine passports and brought in rules, things they can't do. And the other thing that has to happen is they've got to take it upon themselves to start following those rules that are already in place and will curb this outbreak if they follow them. So when you add that all up, the pros against the cons, um, and do a cost benefit analysis. The cost of a lockdown is immense. We're all well aware of that. The benefits of it are entirely uncertain at this point. As I say, the main drivers of lockdown have changed. And for that reason, I don't see us going down that road again 